Hello, friends. Hello, 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 friends. A tradition unlike any other. Oh, 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 my goodness. In your life have you seen anything like that? There it is. Adam Scott, a life changer. Mashed potato. Here it, here it, here it, here it comes. This is the 19th Tea Podcast, Kieran Marsh, Nathan Drudy, back with you for another week, Drudster. Good to have your company again. Good to be here, KM. Lots happening in the golfing world, not well, specifically back here in Oz, Queensland PGA. Yeah, plenty. And we've, we've been really, I must say, from, from the very beginning, very excited by the last couple of weeks of tournament golf in our own backyard, and, and mm. there's a lot of good stuff to come. So uh, we will chat Queensland PGA and Anthony Quayle's win there at the Nudgy Golf Club in just a moment. But as we do it on top of each and every episode, we crack a beer thanks to our great friends at Gage Roads Brewing Company, WA's premier craft brewery, and uh, for the strip of ocean between Rottnest and Fremantle. And a special shout-out to our mates at Gage Roads tonight, Drewster, because you're holding in your hands there number 17 in the Gab's hottest 100 beers, and mm. I am holding in my hand uh, number 89, the sidetrack. Yes. So congratulations to Gage Roads placing two in the Gab's Hottest 100 uh, in recent days. It's, it's, I mean, we'd have them one and two if it were us. Yes. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a competitive field. Great. Beer. It is. It so is. big ups to the, uh, the, the team at Gage Roads for another outstanding year. I also should mention, Drew, off the very top, uh, two quick things. Mm. First and foremost, I'm actually surprised you can hear me. I'm actually surprised that my frequency is getting across the WA border uh, at present. Because it yeah. might might not for much longer, given the current circumstances. No, uh, the wall is up indefinitely. Uh, it was announced. I don't even know what night it was. Wednesday night, I think. You and I were conversing well, back and forth over uh, the message. I think it was interesting. I must I must admit the timing of McGowan's uh, announcement at seven thirty, mm. um, and a lot of East Coasters getting pissed off about the timing. Um, What I would say is not the entire world revolves around the East Coast. It is a West Australian announcement. So that was prime time for WA. So yeah, a lot of years. Um, But it it was taking out the trash. This was a classic taking out the trash move. As soon as I saw 7.30 AWST, I was like, oh, this can't be good news then. Because obviously we're just... We're skipping all of the 6 p.m. bulletins. Yeah. Uh, we're making it incredibly difficult, especially given the 15-minute preamble to get into the actual crux of the announcement. We're oh, pushing, um, you know, unemployment rate tomorrow's West Australian back a long time. So, yeah, very strategically placed at 7:30. But uh, also, I wouldn't suggest Mark McGowan's being the most popular person in in this household over here in. No. Uh, Brisbane with an impending trip planned, which will no longer be going ahead in March to Western Australia. The the, the Democratic People's Republic of yes. Western Australia. It's uh, look, it's divided WA. I think uh, there's been a lot of people who are very supportive. There's a lot of people who are against it. And like I've said, I've had numerous conversations. I think everyone that you talk to, the topic very quickly turns to COVID and uh, the announcement. It's all dependent on your individual circumstances um, and what you've got going on in your life as to to whether. You sit on the, he should have pushed on or he should have um, closed the borders as he did. Alas, uh, what was interesting, KM, as you and I have both worked in the media industry, uh, in, in PR and media management, how many times did you get told, oh, you've missed deadline when sending an article through to a oh, newspaper you've missed, you've or a deadline. TV Sorry station at 4.30 in the afternoon? Yet seven thirty PM, we managed to get it in the paper the next day. Oh, that's big news, mate. It's unbelievable. It's premier. It's unbelievable. The, it's, it's the premier. Um, if we had say, any sort of opposition over here, I mean, they've only got four <laughs> seats. <laughs> so. Well, look, fingers crossed, I can actually make it over for your wedding next year. Yeah, that would uh, be that'd nice. Be, <laughs> that'd be great. Uh, I should also flag. Um, Hello to uh, what I imagine is a number of new listeners because we've, off the back of some coverage of uh, the Australian Golf Summer, we've had a, a fair growth in the following of the mm. 19th tee. So hello if you're tuning in for the first time. Um, no, this is not a podcast about uh, Australian state politics uh, or, Sometimes. or the Omicron response 
of respective states and territories. This is a golf podcast where occasionally, very occasionally, we do digress into tangents. So it's good to have you on board. Um, make sure you're subscribing. Make sure you rate us. Uh, maybe not very highly after the last couple of minutes, but welcome to those people who might be tuning in for the first time to the 19th T podcast. Drewster, uh, the Queensland PGA Championship. Anthony Quayle, a two-stroke winner at 12 under. Great to see the Queensland boy get it done in his backyard. Yeah, adds to his trophy cabinet. Won the Queensland Open last year, I believe. KM, I think he's now the official holder of both he's titles. Got the belts. Undisputed. Yeah. He's got the belts. Yeah. In uh, as as uh, joins the likes of other famous people to hold two belts. Conor McGregor, I think, held two at one time, <laughs> didn't he? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Anyway, I think so. I don't know. That was, a, that was a fucking shit segue. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Anthony Quail, uh, Quail Force. Uh, best stash. Gale Force, I don't mind that. I like that. We should have used that. Why stealing, didn't we? Stealing, because we've got Gale Force. Uh, best stash in the game. I mean, two I want to talk now. to you about that. Okay, sorry. go. Let, no, no, well, let's do the stash first. Come on. Okay. Well, is it? So it's a quality. Um, I probably also want to talk to you about is it stash or is it tash? Because I've probably got some issues there with you throwing an S on the front. But is it? So it's it's a very good one. But I wouldn't want to discount your countryman, David Michaluzzi, and uh, his moustache that he's rocking. Very uh, true. It's been quite prominent. Obviously, he featured and flew a little too close to the sun. Uh, and the Australian PGA did much the same. Did uh, David Michaluzzi, who was uh, second there at one point, I think, in this finished. Yeah. Uh, oofed, 11 shots back. Hopefully get him on at some stage, uh, David Michaluzzi. But he, he himself has a fantastic moustache. So I just I can't definitively say it's the best, but it's in the top two. It's I think it's more prominent than Dave's. It's 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 Dave is thin. Yeah, like it's, it's fuller. Quite, yeah. yeah, yeah. Voluminous. Yeah. Anyway, fine. well done. Uh, thanks um, for that biology lesson. Uh, so Quayle, uh, yeah, finish with a with a round of seventy three on on Sunday. I'm a bit um, nervous. It Start of the day, get... six shots up, Drew. Six shots, he... lady. Yeah, Start of the day. He did, and we'll touch on on Daniel Gale in a moment, who absolutely flew home. I think was one of the only players to shoot under par or or to really give it a good nudge on Sunday. I think he shot six under par. I think on on the Sunday mm. to um, eagle eagle on the back nine was it fifteen? I think so. Find the scorecard here, um, eagle three on the par five fifteenth. Yeah, um, but yeah, Anthony Quayle. I mean, what what a really impressive performance. Only two bogeys and a double across four rounds, and then just uber consistent. Lots of pars. I mean, obviously, um, you know, a bunch of birdies there as well. But he's uh, he he seems like he's playing quite nice golf at the at the moment, Anthony Quayle, and certainly loves playing in Queensland. Yeah, and I think it was really nice to hear him talk about this victory, reinforcing a little bit of belief in him. Obviously, he's been a prominent player on the Asian Tour in the last couple of years from an Australian perspective and often um, figures well in the results when he comes home over the summer. But a little bit of a dry patch there for a period of time in terms of results and good to see him, I suppose, acknowledge that uh, good golf uh, still exists there and, and reinforce his, you know, his belief that he belongs at that level. I think it's really important and an interesting juxtaposition. I mean, we're a week removed from 22 under winning a golf tournament. And this week... It was, it was about surviving more than anything. Uh, you know, um, we'll touch on the course soon, uh, but a, a course early in its, in its tenure, uh, and I know that there's probably some feedback there from the players. It uh, doesn't necessarily, and you'll hear when I kind of give my thoughts, I've got a lot of respect for um, both the PGA and Nudgy for what they put on out there, but I think a, a, a few comments out of the playing group that maybe it wasn't at a mature enough stage to host tournament golf. But more so the conditions. I mean, it was horrific here in Brisbane on Friday, so day two. A um, little bit of rain around, but the wind was sideways, Drew. Mm. Uh, so it was wet on Thursday as well. So I think I think Anthony Quayle's posted a score and he's he's done what he needed to to hang on. And that is often as impressive as running away with it, as Jed Morgan did a week prior. Absolutely. I mean, you know, it's a really good start to the season for him as well. He was T6 at the Aussie PGA as well. Um, so I think uh, Friday was probably the worst of the conditions. Marshy, I think you and I were going yeah. back and forth on, on that day. Um, I mean, he shot an even round of 72, one birdie and one bogey. And, and when a lot of others around him were really 
struggling to get any sort of momentum going or, or dropping considerable amounts of shots. He was able to not do any damage at all and get away with an even par round. And, and ultimately that's saved him and, and won him the tournament despite shooting one over in, in the final round. So um, a really good performance from, from Anthony Quayle, um, an incredibly popular member of, of the tour uh, from, from all reports. I mean, we saw Jake McLeod, uh, was down on the on the green, uh, the first to to celebrate with him, and um, yeah, it just just seems like a, a really great friendship there. And, and Quayle seems like a very popular member of the the Aussie PGA Tour. It's been one of my favourite things through the first two weeks of this Australian summer. We saw it at the Australian PGA with with Louis Dobler, who'll be a guest later this week on the podcast, uh, running on to congratulate one of his best mates in Jed Morgan. And now a week later, um, Jake McLeod doing the same with one of his best mates, Anthony Quayle. I think it's an uh, underappreciated factor in getting tournament golf um, back up and running in this country mm. and getting those players an opportunity to play is not just seeing people win and perform well, but seeing how much it means to them as a group. When if they can't experience success and someone close does. Yeah. Uh, that it means just as much, uh, and I like that's for for Jake McLeod, who himself, I, it's been really nice to see him playing some good quality golf in the last couple of weeks. But for him to, you know, have the presence of mind to to go out and celebrate that that um, that vigorously with his, you know, his best mate was awesome. It's, and it's been, as I said, I think an underappreciated element in the last two weeks has been that sense of community amongst that uh, that that cohort. So really good to see. Daniel Gale, uber impressive. I mean, yeah, just just a, a little bit of a, a mixed bag of performances from Gailey. I mean, on the Friday uh, in the in the worst of the conditions, shot a five over seventy seven. Um, yeah, I mean, st- went out in one under, uh, and then just sort of uh, went from hole number eleven, went bogey, 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 double three pars, and finished with a bogey to to have a back nine of forty two. But then. You know, credit to him, bounce back with a 69 and, and 66, including that eagle, as you touched on, KM, to, I mean, ultimately lose by a couple of shots, but, you know, not not disgraced at all. I'm going to I'm gonna throw an analogy out for the first time in 2022. Um, okay. I've often spoken about Justin Thomas as this person on the PGA Tour. Gailey might be the PGA Tour of Australasia's Jesse Mendoza. <laughs> Just can't and break. So, so for those people who... Um, I mentioned you at the top, my opportunity for the first time, or for those who can't remember the last time I, I drew this analogy. Um, Jesse Mendoza is the character in Mighty Ducks 2 uh, who can't skate and therefore can't stop. So electric speed, but just can't break. And that works both ways. When you're on a hot streak, it means you're the hottest of hot, but when you're sliding, there is no, there's no stop to the momentum. And that might be Gailey. Yeah. Because Gailey's best is as good as there is like yeah. when he's on it is phenomenal and you look at that like that's 77 he's five over on thursday if that's even three over yeah. he's going to a playoff with anthony yeah. quayle if it's two yeah. over he wins the tournament and around that he's hit 66 69 66 and to your point he's he's gone what's he gone on the back he's gone birdie par 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 bogey eagle par birdie par to finish his tournament through the back nine on Sunday. So he's, he is. He's the Allens all sorts, mate. That's uber you know, entertaining I like that. though. Like it's, it's box office and I love it. I love everything about it top to bottom. It's interesting looking at, at where, you know, Gailey could go this, this season. I mean, he's, I, we follow him on Instagram and I have no doubt in my mind and, and the, he has worked unbelievably hard throughout mm. COVID, throughout everything that happened last year with with a lack of tournaments. Um, you know, he was grinding away at courses and in the backyard and hitting the gym and his physio and everything. And you know, maybe he just documents that more than than other players. And I'm sure there are others that that do that. But it's it's hard to think of someone who really deserves a a top three order of merit finish more than than Gailey. He's put in so much, and and really, I mean, we're, we're talking about two two cards left. I mean, Jed Morgan's not going to be caught at the top. You know, he's yeah. got one hundred eighty thousand under his belt. 
Andrew Dote, 105,000. Then Louis Dobler, 81 and a half. Louis, uh, you know, as, as people will hear on Thursday, has obviously got a fair bit lined up this year as far as Latin America and, and whatnot. So I'm, I'm sure he's, he would love to finish in the top three and, and secure a European tour card. But if not, he's, he's got a fallback option. I think someone like Daniel Gale, I mean, he's going to go ahead of Minwoo Lee very shortly, who's seventh on the list. And then Jack Thompson, Brad Kennedy, Andrew Quayle ahead of him. He, Gale is a very good chance to, to wrap up one of those remaining two cards um, and, and find himself on the European tour next year. I've no doubt in my mind that he's going to be a winner this year on the Aussie on the Aussie tour. I mean, he's he, he has been so close so many times, and I reckon it's just a matter of time before he's holding the trophy. I agree with you. Um, and I don't say this in any way, shape, or form as a criticism. Not the most naturally talented player, mm. but nobody works harder. No. And it is, you know, I, I can only speak from experience of walking a few holes in him at the PGA at Royal Queensland. It's never not entertaining. You know, even the end of the swing, it's that it, it almost makes you feel uncomfortable. It's the Scotty Scheffler slip out of your stance when he hits mm. the ball, and you have to you look feel like he can, he's going to do his ACL on his left knee every swing he takes. But yeah, he mate, he, he is, and it, there's tape to prove it. The the wrist, I think it might be the left wrist, is taped up in every round, probably just repetitive stress injury. He's mm. just practicing all the bloody time. Yeah. So yeah, I completely agree, and and I, I think eighth on the order of merit where he is now as you flagged, it's probably not a, an accurate reflection. It will be about those ahead of him. So you mentioned Min Woo's not going to play another tournament this summer. Yeah. So then you're talking really about Jack Thompson, Brad Kennedy, Anthony Quayle, who we should have mentioned. Uh, his win here solidifies his spot in fourth. Um, Louis and Andrew Doat. Um, even Andrew Doat, like 105,000. And a lot was being made of the battle for second at the Australian PGA last week and how important it was. Um, and the wheels rattled a little bit in the last few holes for Andrew Dote, but he got the job done. It's so important. Mm-hmm. Like the jump from Louis uh, to Andrew Dote in terms of prize money, you know, here is even more than 20000 So not to be sneezed at, but yeah, Gailey, Gailey will get it done, death by a 1,000 cuts. He'll just post results. And to mm-hmm. your point, he'll snag a win. And wouldn't surprise me in the slightest to see him finish in that top three and lock up a European tour card. Well, he's going to play every every event available, I would suggest. Um, I, I've got no idea if Probably it's true. Probably host his own just to play more golf. <laughs> he could. But, you know, it, it, all it's going to take is is top tens semi-regularly or, or a top five at a Vic Open that'll really bump him bump him up that that order of merit so yeah so for context just looking ahead in terms of purses uh tps victoria at rosebud hosted by uh, jeff ogilvy is next third to sixth of february hundred and fifty thousand dollar purse then it's the vic open down at 13th beach uh 10th to 13th of february four hundred and ten thousand. that's the big one really because the rest yeah. you've got tps murray river 150 tps sydney 150 tps hunter valley 200 Golf Challenge New South Wales Open. That's another four hundred thousand. That's the um, one he's going to win. Yeah, well, in his in his backyard, right? Yeah. Um, Concord Golf Club there, seventeenth to the twentieth of March, and then there'll be a bit of cash in the New Zealand Open, mm. um, which interestingly doesn't have a venue, which is odd. No, oh, it says no, it does. It has says Millbrook. It doesn't have a purse. No, TBC on the purse. Yeah, maybe they're figuring out the exchange rate with the NZD. Um, <laughs> yeah, I would think that. You know, he'll set his sights on Vic Open, New South Wales Open, those $400,000 purses. You jag a podium finish there and you're going to start rocketing up that order of merit. So, yeah, he's, mate, I, I, I wish so much for him to be playing in Europe next year because I think he's exactly the type of guy who'd relish going and travelling Europe and playing golf nonstop. He's like, he's kind of like the Steve Smith of golf. He just loves it, like, He's, he's probably in his hotel room at the moment uh, off the back of Queensland Open, sorry, Queensland PGA, or maybe he's heading down to TBS. He'd be in his hotel room just swinging clubs at 1 a.m. in the morning. He just yeah. loves it. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. I'll give you a comp to the PGA tour, Bryson. I reckon there's a lot of Bryson about him. The, his swing. He's so much more likable, though. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. But the way that the front foot clears out, the distance yeah. that he generates, 
you know, loves posting the videos of him at the range and, the, and, and in the gym. Like, I reckon there's a lot of Bryson about him. And just, you know, we were talking about before about working hard. I mean, regardless of what you think about Bryson, you can't deny that the dude works hard in the gym and, and on the range. And, um, yeah, I reckon there's a bit of Bryson about Daniel Gale. So, hopefully he gets a win this year. I'd love to see him um, holding a trophy and he, and he absolutely deserves it. Any other names jumping out at you? Obviously, um, we won't go too much into Louis because Louis will be a guest on Thursday evening, but back-to-back top threes. Mm-hmm. He's well and truly entrenched in the third place of the Order of Merit. Um, you mentioned he's obviously locked up his PGA Tour Latin America card for this year, but I'm sure he'd love options. I'm sure he'd mm-hmm. love to, to pick and choose his year between Europe and, and Latin America. So, uh, you know, we've we've recorded that chat. It's in the can, and uh, he gets more impressive every time I talk to him. He's yeah. such such a level-headed young guy and really an awful lot of perspective about where his golf game is at and what's still to come. And yeah, he's he's super impressive. Yeah. Very, very good chat coming too. And yeah, and a great, great start to the year for, for Louis. Um, shout out to Josh Armstrong as well. Probably a name that, you know, maybe a lot of people won't know. Will be a future guest on this podcast um, as well. He was equal 17th at the Aussie PGA and, and finished in a share of fourth uh, alongside Justin Warren, I think. Um, so uh, oh, a man. Good, good start to the year for, for Joshy Armstrong. Uh, Justin Warren, do you want to, do you want to, I mean, again, that Friday round really hurt, um, really hurt him with a, with a 74. And then um, unfortunately just a one over par 73 for, for Wazza, um, but two nice rounds in there of, of 69 and 66 in the in the first and third rounds. I, I was messaging him on Saturday evening, almost sending him the Zoom link to join us for a victory chat <laughs> on Monday night. I got a little ahead of myself. And mm. to be to be fair and to his credit, he put my feet back on the ground on Saturday night. Uh, you know, that stage he was six shots behind Anthony Quayle. Um, <laughs> wobbled on the back nine on Sunday. I think it would be... Fair to suggest, yeah. Yeah. Roots. yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, trending in the right direction. I know he was he was he was disappointed uh, with the Australian PGA, and you know we talk just about how hard Gailey works. Wiz is, is a is a fiend for getting it right. Um, you know, a good chat to him after going out there on Thursday, and he was he was retrospective about his round of filthy, I think, and, yeah. and, and just as filthy to have not played the weekend at Royal Queensland. So, you know, for a T4 finish, um, back in the right direction, man. That's really good to see from him. So, anyone else? Of course. Else? No, nothing, no one else from me, the course. Sorry, just a quick mention of two people. Um, Josh Greer. Yep, leading uh, amateur, I think. He, this kid, special. A couple of yeah. recent results, uh, you know, and I think he's gone down to the New South Wales amateur at the moment, I think, which is underway at the moment. Mm-hmm. Uh, he so he's finished at one under as a leading amateur, uh, and he's put together some fairly decent rounds, sixty nine and sixty nine to bookend his tournament. He was two over, and then what's that? Four over. Mm, I think he's West Australian, Josh Greer, I believe. So keep an eye on that name. Black book that, as they say in racing parlance, Josh Greer. Mm-hmm. Uh, and just want to flag Elvis Smiley. So, uh, T18. Obviously, yeah, obviously, huge fans of Elvis on this podcast, but I, I don't think it'd be uh, telling him anything he doesn't know. It's probably a little bit disappointing through his first two outings of 2022, uh, particularly when he sees two of his QAS classmates in, in Jed Morgan and, and Louis Dobler. Are doing so well. So uh, the only reason I flagged that is expect a revert in form. Yeah. A course correction, as they say in the market. Markets. Market correction. Yeah, a market correction. Of, of which we are seeing one currently. Jeez. Oofty. Good good week for you to enter the crypto market. Oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, bye, yeah, bye, this bye. Is- yeah, this is uh, what does Warren Buffett say? Uh, be be greedy when others are cautious, and cautious when others are greedy. Yeah. So I got uh, I got <laughs> I think I got greedy when others were greedy, and then it just just hit. Anyway, this is not a um, cryptocurrency podcast. Buy more now. Like yeah, buy. Buy more. Bye bye bye. Buy more. I like where I'm at. Um, Do you? 
No, Jesus, no, I don't. Not presently with the money I've lost in the last <laughs> week, but having just invested it. But if it were, what everyone tells me, hodl. Yeah, it's going back up. Um, I've, I've staked Excellent. it all anyway, so it ain't, it ain't going anywhere. I'm Did you? My point well zero, 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 four, three. Solana. Solana. Every, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's good shit. I re- I'm going to um, buy more. I mean, I'm buying more. What I, what I was saying is market correction for Elvis Smiley pending. I absolutely expect him uh, to, I was going to say win. That's a big call. There's mm. six or seven events left, but he's going to be at the pointy end more than he's not for the remainder of the summer. He's too good a talent. So just want to call uh, Elvis out to, uh, to watch this space in the coming weeks. So the course, um, as, as I said, we're trying to be as diplomatic as we can here. Not necessarily the most popular tournament venue amongst mm-hmm. the, the playing group. Um, so for context, and, and I spoke about this when the, it was announced that Nudgee would host the Queensland PGA. Um, I called it then and I, I reinforced, I think it was a pretty brave decision at the time by the PGA because it's found a a comfortable home up the Sunshine Coast, most recently, recently at Pelican Waters for the last couple of years, which is a beautiful course in the Caloundra region of the Sunshine Coast, for those mm-hmm. familiar. Um, and much in the same way as it was a brave decision to take the Australian PGA for all pines and move to all Queensland. Similarly, it was to move the Queensland PGA to Nudgee, particularly when this course that they played has only recently finished uh, a renovation, an expansion from James Wilcher, the local architect. So... An awful lot of work has gone. Nudgee's always been a good course, but an awful lot of work has gone into, I suppose, future proof it, make it a great course and a course worthy of hosting events like this. Now, there'd be elements of the playing group that said that, sure, maybe in a couple of years when it's had some time to grow in and, and mature, they made a brave decision to go uh, now. I, I just think that this is the t- type of thing you need to invest in early, right? Because there's no point in waiting a couple of years. You probably end up in a contract with someone, you know, moving forward and, and you miss the journey that this tournament could take with this course. And I see mm. it very much as a, you know, you know, Louis Dobler says it um, in our chat later this week that it's a quirky course. The Brisbane mm. needed something a little different because often it gets a little cookie cutter here mm-hmm. in Southeast Queensland and James Wiltshire to his credit, has reimagined that nudgy space. It's a it's an excellent looking course. Sure, it might be a little bit ahead of its time in terms of hosting tournament golf, but I'd rather be ahead than behind uh, and get it on its way out. So I, I just want to give the PGA a pat on the back. I also want to give Nudgy a pat on the back. Like it takes a lot of guts to rip up something that's been so well established uh, and, and try your hand with with a younger architect. You know, they didn't bring in a Clayton DeVries and Port and, and, and you know, uh, OCM uh, mm. Golf, you know, our good friend Mike Cocky. So they, they went with a local local guy and they gave him a shot. And from what I can see, I mean, I don't know if you saw the – did you see the 18th? What mm. a hole. Mm. What a hole. 165, 170-metre par three, mm. almost entirely forced carry over water. It's not often you see a finishing hole being a par three either. And I love it. Like it, it was a, it was set up so well, given the way Anthony Quayle's round went and the way Daniel Gale's back nine went on Sunday, that he 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 stood on that team with a two shot lead, and he would have been shitting himself. Like in all honesty, hundred percent. With the massive crowd, the grandstand at the back, and the force carry one hundred and seventy meters <laughs> over water. Uh, yeah, a credit I think must go to the architect, uh, the PJ, and the club. I also just want to shout out the club. So on Wednesday. They officially opened the new course. So they now have 36 holes. Mm-hmm. Nudgy. It always had 27, and then they built another nine and kind of reshaped. And so they now have genuinely two courses. Uh, and they officially opened the new course, which is where the tournament was played, and renamed both courses. So right. they called the new course uh, the, the, the Cowdy course or the Cordy course, which in Turrbal language, and Turrbal is the Indigenous country that the course sits on. So the Turrbal mm-hmm. people are north of the Brisbane uh, River. The Yagara people are south of the Brisbane River. In Turrbal uh, language, um, Kauri means sunset. Right. And the course is west-facing. That's cool. The east course, they named the Bulka course, which in Turrbal language is sunrise. Right. And that was voted on 
by the Nudgy members. So the Nudgy cool. members, uh, I wouldn't say in full, but in their majority, overwhelmingly voted to adopt uh, the Turable language in both courses, which I, I think is awesome. That's uh, and I think very cool. You know, so much more can be done in that space. To <laughs> at the end of the day, every course that tournament golf has played on, that you and I play on, that anyone who walks onto a golf course in this country has played on, is played on country. Mm. Mm. And I would suggest that the great majority of people don't even think about that when they walk onto a course. Not only is it thought of now, but the Nudgy membership has been so proactive in bringing it front of mind by using the Turbo language to name the courses. So I think they deserve an enormous pat on the back for their acknowledgement of country in the new course as well. Very cool. Very, very cool when you tell me that before. I, yeah, love that. It's great to see. I think like, I think it's certainly starting to become a little bit more, um, I think golf courses are starting to become a little bit more present in a lot of that sort of stuff. I mean, not by the same vein, but Wembley Golf Course over here, um, you would have seen, got rid of men's and women's tees. Mm. Um, it's no longer a thing. You now play for them. I think they've got three sets of tees, which I think it's like black, white, and green. And you play from your score. So if you're shooting under, I think it's under 85, you play from the back tees. X to X is the middle tees. And if you're 100 plus, you play from the front tees. Like stuff like that we, is absolutely where the, the game needs to be going. So fantastic to see the, to, to see the guys out at Nudgee doing um, a really, really, really cool thing. And I guarantee you, clubs like Nudgee and Wembley, with that attitude and mindset, will be the ones that survive and thrive in the next yeah, 20 absolutely. to 30 years, and not the ones who don't you wear black socks. Yeah, exactly right. No, 100%. I think, uh, yeah, it's yeah, it's fantastic to see a lot of these clubs uh, doing doing the right thing. And I'm sure there are plenty more out there mm. um, that we just haven't heard the stories of. So. But, um, yeah, no, fantastic to see. And I'm sure the, um, the, the Aboriginal people, uh, who are from that area are very appreciative of what the, the Nudgy uh, Golf Club has done as well. So, Drew, it's just on the domestic front before we move on. Obviously, as we flag, there's a couple of events coming. The next for the men's is the TPS Victoria at Rosebud on the 3rd of February. That tournament begins on the WPGA side. The Melbourne International kickstarted today. So we're recording this Monday night, the 24th. Kickstarted today, the first round at La Trobe. Golf club and good friend of the pod and comfortably the best socks in Australian golf. Mm. Karis Davison leads the way at four under a 68 on the opening day of the tournament. Absolutely. Uh, playing some very, very good golf. It is only a two round tournament. So we'll wrap up tomorrow. So her, herself and Brianna Gill uh, are tied for the lead at the moment. Uh, as you mentioned, a, a four under 68 and they're ahead of a host of players, uh, including our good friend, Whitney Hillier, Grace Kim, uh, Kirsten Rudgley, who will be a future guest on this podcast as well. They're all at, uh, at T3, two shots back. So it should be a ripping finish to that tournament tomorrow. Uh, and it's exciting that we don't have to wait four days for a result, Marshy. <laughs> <laughs> we like that. We're we a little do. bit impatient. Yeah, we are. But, so uh, we yeah, great, to, great to see Karis starting well. Okay, we're going to move overseas, Drew. But before we do, mm. uh, in the words of... Uh, Ricky, Bobby, dear Lord, baby Jesus, our friends at Capra Puma Golf have done it again. I don't know. I mean, I asked this rhetorically. I don't know if you've seen, because I know you've seen, uh, the Very. release of the new LTDX mm. range of fairway and metal. Well, it's obviously uh, it's across the line, into the irons as well, which looks just as good. We're going to talk to you tonight about the uh, the fairway and metal. Wood. So drivers, fairways and hybrids. Mm -hmm. uh, feature power core technology, which uses multi-material internal and external weights to reposition as much weight low and forward as possible to lower the spin, which is what we need, Drewster, because mm. uh, I remember my track man numbers the day we went for our fitting at Cobra Puma. High spin generating, Yeah, generating far too much spin. So we all, we're all about lowering uh, the spin. Uh, the engineers have redesigned the previous T-bar chassis to reposition more titanium lower to the ground, as we say, continuing to lower that spin rate. And to ensure, Drewster, that the LTDX line is able to optimise performance for all types of players, it's available in three distinct models. So you've got the LTDX LS, which is the low spin model, probably right up yours and my alley. Mm -hmm. The LTDX Max, which combines maximum stability and maximum draw bias. That's me. Also could be right up our alley. 
And then there's the LTD-X, which is the perfect blend of the LS and the Max into one driver. The only other thing I want to say on these before I hand it over to you to tuck it under the belt and talk more about the new Cobra Puma line, the colours. So mm. you've got the the, the lovely uh, traditional uh, orange and black uh, with the matte finish on top. And then you've got a new blue and black number, which is a bit glossy on the head of the driver. So. Mm. They've, uh, they've certainly, I'm sure, done a bit of market research in that space. But overall, the new LTD X line, Dreadstar, looks sensational. Doesn't it ever? I mean, you you got the matte finish on your speed zone, I think. I got the matte on my speed zone and I've got the, the gloss on my on the rad, rad speed. I don't think they did a matte in the rad speed. So no. I, I think I'm going to go the matte finish this time around if we can slide into the DMs of Cobra and our good mate 40 and I'm sure 40 is going to sort us out. I mean, to be he fair, to he's been up. sorting out, you know, the actual professionals on their books. Don't first waste, and foremost. Don't waste your time with that shit. <laughs> Hit it our way. Uh, the only thing I wanted to mention was this hot face, highly yeah. optimized topology. Yeah. I mean, it's, if you love your, your, your golf jargon and you really want to geek out on all of this sort of stuff, there's a, uh, a about a three and a half page, Media oh, release, which we might post the media release on, <laughs> on the uh, on the feed. We can do it with the SWAT function, and people yes. can get right into the. Uh, yeah. I'm sure that won't be won't be an issue. Uh, oh. People can get right into the jargon because I have waded through that to, yes. to bring you the most a, a breath version as I can. But yeah. there's, I think maybe one of the engineers potentially wrote some notes that the marketing department fleshed out because there's a oh, lot of uh, tech heavy speak. <laughs> the marketing manager has just tidied up for grammar. No, they haven't put any spin on any of couple that. Of, that is, couple of commas. That is just, of commas. That's been what you and I used to do when we would ask the, the community department to have a first pass and then we would uh, yeah. we'd come over the top. What's about the coaching course that you're about to run? That's yeah. great. <laughs> if you wouldn't mind just writing about it first and then we'll we'll come in. But uh, excellent stuff. I know this just probably seems like a three-minute ad, but it's uh, very, very cool. In, in a world where... Technology is so strong. I mean, one of the best drivers of the golf ball in the world in Bryson DeChambeau uses it. Ricky Fowler will be using this. Uh, the whole stable, Lexi Thompson will be, it'll be in her bag as well. I mean, it's just- Hayden Barron. Hayden man, Barron, Hayden Barron. Yes, I saw he was out there today. I did message him. I said, what are you going to, what are you going to go for? And he said, he's a traditionalist. So he'll be going for the black. Um, but yeah, it's just, it, it's such a great quality product. I mean, the drivers that you and I have both had in the bag of done wonders for our games and i know we're sitting here singing the praises of cobra but it is genuinely so important to your game that you do either go and get fitted for the right clubs that absolutely fit your game um it'll make a, a, a massive distance i know my my distance has improved massively in having not just the the speed zone and the rad from a driver perspective but the irons that i've got in there um, have made such a massive difference to my game, and I'm sure you'll attest to that as well. Yeah, out of sight, out of sight. So looking forward to, and don't forget as well, as I mentioned, it's not just the driver, it's the three wood, the fairway woods, and the hybrids, which mm. I absolute they'll be doing a good job to pry my current hybrid out of my hands. So <laughs> I'm sure the LTDX hybrid is phenomenal, but proof will be in the pudding when I get the swing one, because my current Puma hybrid, so not Puma, my Cobra hybrid, is... Yeah, it's it's the I've, it's impossible to hit the ball fat with my current hybrid. I don't know what it is. I think it's the rail technology. Yes, uh, it's well, phenomenal. So I yeah. I traded that out for a two iron. So yeah, but only yeah, I shouldn't say that. So <laughs> only only wankers have driving irons, but that's fine. Don't worry about it. It's fine. It's uh, uh, <laughs> unless you're unless you're playing. Uh, very you know, difficult in Scotland hit. and trying mm. to hit, the, hit it underneath the brace. Hey, well, you or, could have used it at Nudgy last week, you know. You could have. I'm so, sure probably a few people did. Yeah. Uh, so, look, long and the short, LTDX range of drivers, fairway woods and hybrids. We'll tell you a little bit more about the irons next week. Uh, the full LTDX range will be available from late February, retail and online. This is what they call a tease, mm. Dreads, because it is late January. So we're yes. getting a full month ahead of time with the tease for the new LTDX line. Stay tuned. Uh, you will, I'm sure, see a flood of content when our driver heads turn up in the mail.
European Tour, DP World Tour first before the PGA because I must admit the probably the, the goal from Abu Dhabi was a little bit more interesting than uh, the American Express goal. Yeah, everything so aside from the golf at the American Express was interesting. The Yas Golf Links, Yas, <laughs> Yas Queen Golf Links in Abu Dhabi. Uh, Thomas Peters. A winner again on the European Tour, Druids. Uh, we we spoke about the difficult conditions at Nudgy Golf Club in the Queensland PGA on Friday. Well, uh, the second round uh, in Abu Dhabi made uh, <laughs> made it look like it go, could go sailing on still water at Nudgy on Friday. Mm. It was horrific. I think I saw a quote from Rory McIlroy who said, "I've never wanted to get off a golf course quicker." Yeah. than I did after the second round on Friday. Um, Tyrrell Hatton <laughs> hit a golf hit a, <laughs> a golf ball on um, the back nine on Friday and the hot mics picked him up saying, fuck golf. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> uh, Tyrrell Hatton, and I'll get to his comments in a moment as well about the 18th uh, hole on the course. Tyrrell Hatton was doing some very Tyrrell Hatton things. But Thomas Peters, a one-stroke winner over Rafa Cabrera Barrow, and Shubhankar Sharma. Uh, mm. You don't see many Indian players. No. Uh, obviously, Abhihan Lahiri in recent years, but Shubhankar Sharma played very well to only finish a stroke back. And then Drewster, uh, obviously, um, the two victors in a tie for fourth, Hovland, uh, the, the better known, and a resurgent Victor Dubois-Saint <laughs> of France, the former Ryder Cup. Ryder Cup. <laughs> yeah. Very, uh, very odd man. <laughs> Yeah. He finished, uh, the, the, the victors finished in a tie for fourth. And then the only other one worth mentioning, Adam Scott, who I must admit, I genuinely can't remember the last time I saw Adam Scott playing on the European Tour that wasn't the Open Championship. Yeah, well, that's what happens when you get an enormous check in the mail to come yeah. and play. Uh, the only a, one... bearded, a bearded Adam yeah. Scott finished uh, six under in a tie for 10th. Not sure about the beard. Um, the only thing I was going to mention... Uh, as you mentioned, with Shabanka Sharma and Rafa Cabrera-Bayo, it was those two and Jeff Winter were the only players to shoot all four rounds under par. Everyone else had at least a round of par or worse. Uh, And Scott Jamison went out and shot 63 on the opening day and looked essentially uncatchable. Uh, Mm. From there, he was playing some fantastic golf um, and then proverbially fell off a cliff with a 74, 68, and then finished with a a 77 as well. So uh, really just vomited all over himself, as I like to say, to finish uh, our, our second, uh, sorry, tied 10th with, with Adam Scott. So, but did I think, the, see, <laughs> yeah, you go. I was just going to make a fashion call. Did you see Cabrera Bayo's get up on the final day, the bright yellow uh, tightless hat into the Oakleys, uh, the blue lens yellow What's that part of the, the sunglass called? You know, the part that goes actually back past you. The arms? Yep. They were, they were a yellow arm of the sunglass into a yellow hat. He looked very slick. Yeah. I uh, did, did the Spaniard. You haven't sold it to me, so. No, well, I <laughs> probably kind of had to see it to believe it uh, and believe in it by the sounds of it. Yeah. Um, I just did want to mention, I, I, I said that Tyrrell Tr- Tr- had some thoughts on the golf course. Yeah, so. and I've got some thoughts on Tyrrell Hatton's comments. So, okay. let, let, me, let me read you this quote. Bear in mind, this is, as I said, after on Friday, uh, he was picked up saying, fuck golf uh, mm. on the hot mics. So, not the best week for a guy who I think finished in a tie for fifth, tie for sixth at seven under, three shots back from the winner. Uh, on number 18, he carded a double bogey seven on day two, a quadruple bogey nine in round three. Uh, and then... Went on to say, uh, <laughs> I would love, this is a direct quote. Mm. I would love for a bomb to drop on it and blow it to oblivion, to be honest. He said to reporters on site, it's such a terrible finishing hole. And the fact that they moved the tee back today is ridiculous. I hit a really good tee shot and still had 290 yards to the front. I could peg up a driver and still not get there. It would be a much better finishing hole if you're actually rewarded for hitting the fairway, which, as it stands, you're not. Shut the fuck up, Tyrrell. <laughs> I love Tyrrell Hatton, 
He's yeah, one of so he's comfortably inside my top ten favorite golfers purely for entertainment value. But that is one of the stupidest comments that I think I've heard for quite some time. Oh, it was too far back. I'm sorry. Just because you can't reach a par five in two shots doesn't make it a stupid golf hole. Like the the enormous amount of soft, boring, crappy setups that we go to every week on the PGA Tour and even the European Tour to an extent, and then we get to somewhere where the conditions aren't favourable, uh, where the setup isn't favourable because it's apparently too long, and we're bitching and moaning about it. And we'll, we'll get to PGA West in a moment, but like these are the best golfers in the world. Mm. Like you cannot bitch and moan to me about how difficult this golf course was. His comments were pretty tone deaf too, because I believe I heard this, I read that, and then I thought there was somewhere that there was some sort of drone strike. In the in, in the week in in the UAE, whether I don't know if it was Dubai or Abu Dhabi or, or somewhere, but um, I've read that somewhere. I'm hoping that I'm relaying the, the correct information here, but I just thought it was an absolutely ludicrous comment to be making, um, given the soft bullshit that we see every week on the PGA Tour. Yeah, I completely agree, Dreadster. Uh, I. To your point, sidebar, probably just to best to avoid using the phrase drop a bomb mm. um, in the Middle East. Yeah, <laughs> Middle East. Just, <laughs> just park it, find any one of a number of hundred other analogies to use. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's just, it's just not smart. And no. to be fair, I'm with you. I'm also a huge fan of Cyril Atten's. He makes golf interesting, uh, which many of his colleagues do not. But like, it's not meant to be. Sorry, Tyrrell, they didn't make it easy for you. Yeah. I'm sorry that the approach wasn't to your liking. Uh, like, Jesus, there's plenty of other guys uh, who managed to, to, to birdie that hole yeah. uh, a number of times across the weekend. Uh, so I think maybe the fact that you've had a seven and a nine um, in back-to-back rounds has somewhat influenced uh, your, your opinion on the 18th. Yes, yeah. golf links. A hundred percent. Like, I just think it's such a ridiculous, ludicrous comment, to be honest. Like, I'm looking on the maps here on Google Maps. I can't even really work out exactly where it, which one's 18 to to jog my memory. But, it, yeah, the stupid comment. And I'm glad that he's probably copping a fair bit of flack for it, rightly so. That'll probably do me for Europe. Yep, same. Um because we had another hot mic situation. <laughs> yeah. We might talk about the winner first and foremost, uh, the American Express. Mm. Uh, Hudson Swafford wins uh, at this, which I often find quite unique, this tournament. Obviously, uh, you've got PGA West mm-hmm. uh, and La Quinta. Uh, they obviously they change over. And it's West, isn't it? That's the Pete Dye design. Yep. Yeah. The, yeah, the classic Pete Dye design. Um, and then La, La Quinta, probably a little softer in its, in its, mm-hmm. in its penal nature than, uh, careful when you say penal, um, mm-hmm. uh, of, of PGA West. But uh, Hudson Swafford gets the job done. The only thing I wanted to mention other than congratulating Hudson Swafford, and you watched a little bit more of this than I did, was, was buoyed by the performance of Patrick Cantlay. I was very bullish um, about my prediction of Patrick Gantley winning a major this year in uh, our first episode of the year. And he looked good. Um, fell away in pretty classic Patrick Gantley fashion. But I'm, I'm buying, certainly not selling, Drudes, as per our you know, conversation a little earlier, I'm buying Patrick mm. Gantley coin uh, moving forward this year. No, he was very good. Uh, Francesco Molinari played uh, and somehow finished inside yeah. the- <laughs> inside the top that was, 10. Who's that? Um, uh, Punter Harmon uh, finished T3, which was good it's alongside Lanto Griffin and Lee Hodge. There are so many names on here that I have no idea who they are. Uh, also finishing in T6 was Will Zalatoris. Um, and it reminded me of a conversation that we had at the start of last year where we got asked the question, how many times will Will Zalatoris win? 
or how close will Will Zalatoris win? And I was very like bearish. Fourteen. 15. I said he, I said I was very bearish. I said he would not get near a victory. So it's probably about the first thing that I've got right. Yeah. I know he got close at the Masters, but didn't win. So uh, no. anyway, Hudson Swafford, uh, twenty three under. Sunday 64 finished with uh, and it was pretty close coming down the stretch. Uh, there are a bunch of players tied at uh, 20, 21 under going to the last handful of holes. He bogeyed 13 and 15. Um, didn't have a par on the on the the first eight holes of the back nine. Went birdie, 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 bogey, birdie, bogey, eagle to set up the win. Birdie on 17 and then parred the 18th. So I mean, honestly, this is a tournament that does absolutely nothing for me. Um, I have spent a bit of time down in La Quinta, uh, down in Palm Springs. It's an interesting place, uh, one of the more interesting parts of the USA. Uh, but, yeah, it just does nothing for me. The leaderboard didn't interest me at all. The only thing that made this interesting was some of the player reactions, which I'm sure you can bring us into. <laughs> so, uh, John Rahm. Mm-hmm. Uh, current current world number one. He's mm-hmm. still world number one, I believe. Yeah. Uh, John Rahm had some thoughts. <laughs> uh, so for the second round, uh, Putter was letting him down a little uh, across the first round and a half. He was on the the Nicholas course, mm-hmm. the other course as opposed to the Dyer course. Uh, and a fan caught him walking from green to tee on the mobile phone recording and it picks him up saying what a piece of shit set up fucking putting contest this week. So I don't even know what that means. Or I think it means that there's no challenge T to green. And this is essentially the winner is who's dropping birdies, which again, similar to Tyrrell, I find it hard to be uh, empathetic with your plight, John. I love you. But yeah, um, it's the PGA Tour, brother. What don't you understand about um, long drive, wedge, good putt generally wins tournaments? Yeah, so I was going to say, I'm is not that sure not, what's unclear? Not, not every week on the PGA Tour? Maybe uh, slightly dialed up here, but I I, it's not like a, yeah. I know. It was, it was uh, really weird. I know in the, the uh, I know in the next, um, or, or there's been a lot of talk about the stadium course and Pete Dye's set up and his work of it. Um, Mainly out of the playing group. Yeah, and and in yeah, the 80s, there was some, you know, essentially boycotting like of, of the course that they wouldn't be coming back. Um, it's a mature response from the players. Yeah, That's but good... I mean, my, my, my thought is like it was all played on the stadium course today, which is um, the Pete Dye course. Mm. Uh, just looking at the top, the top 10s, the scores were 64, 68, 64, 67, 70, 67, 67, 68, 68. Like everyone's still shooting under par comfortably. Mm. Like it can't be that difficult if everyone's still shooting under par. Um, so I don't know. Again, it's one of those situations where I'm just like, like just get on with it. Like I, I, I don't want to hear anyone whinging about set up when you're the best players in the world playing with the most advanced modern technology that the ball flies, you know, not double, but nearly as far as it did in the eighties. Like you have no excuses. No. And I'm conscious also that like we can't have our cake and eat it too. One of the best things about John Rahm is that he's unfiltered. And that's mm. what we tend to love about him. So we can't, I don't think, but I don't necessarily think we're criticizing him for his reaction. I think we're criticizing him for the theme of what he's saying. Mm. Like if he's 100%. angry at himself for missing a putt, no worries. If he's angry that the course is only rewarding good putting, well, shit, John, that's half a golf. Mm. So, you know, I think we're also maybe getting a little window into why the world number one has not been amongst the players to agree to an unfiltered access of a Netflix documentary <laughs> to him uh, in and around the golf course, uh, potentially a bit of um, image protection yeah, maybe. Uh, to, 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 to go there. So, oh, look, Drew, it was, it was entertaining, I think, on both of the major men's tours that we see a meltdown um, when it comes, just reinforces to you that uh, professional golfers can, in fact, be petulant children. 
and yes. when things don't tend to go their way. As um, we all the, are on the golf course. The only other thing I want to mention about American Express, Seamus Power. Mm-hmm. Keep an eye on Seamus Power. So Irishman, as I'm sure you can probably tell by his name, he is averaging something like 60, somewhere between 66 to 67 as he's scoring average over the last like 18 rounds. Mm. He's in stupid form mm. at the moment. Will be, I'm telling you right now, before the end of this year, will be a PGA Tour winner. I think he's won, hasn't he? Hasn't he? Hasn't didn't he? he win like Corrales Punta Cana or something? Oh, well, if it's one of those, it doesn't like, matter. Like a few months ago, because remember I was... Was it an alternate field event? Yeah, it was, but I was real bullish on him for ages because he had a few top threes and I'm hopeful he he can translate it. I am also conscious that a lot of the the big dogs, uh, the blue chip stocks, aren't playing in these events as well. So uh, when probably won't come back until what's maybe the Arnold Palmer in a couple of weeks. When uh, when, When the Berkshire Hathaways and the Alphabets and the... Uh, the Apple and the Tesla stocks come back, then uh, Airbnb. Might, be, might be a different story. Airbnb, yeah. I think we've gone deep on the financial side of things tonight. Um, it's good, not financial advice. Do your own research. Anyway, yeah. What else you got? Fucking PDS, baby. Product disclosure. <laughs> this is absolutely not financial advice in any way, shape, or form. Uh, I just want to mention uh, Daniel Kang was a yep. winner of the. I'm not going to um, give a free plug to Hilton because I can't really remember the full name of the tournament, but essentially it was the uh, LPGA version of the Tournament of Champions. Um, so uh, congratulations to Daniel Kang, who held off uh, obviously a very quality field because you had the win last year on the LPGA Tour to be there. So uh, both quarter sisters figured early in the week, uh, but it was Daniel Kang who got it done. I saw some interesting comments from her. So I don't know if you saw much out of the Lake Nona Golf Club in Orlando. It's played in Not Florida. This tournament, uh, horrendously cold conditions, unseasonably cold conditions in from, for Florida at this time of year at the back end of the tournament. And she specifically said afterwards that uh, she spent a lot of time in the past five or six months specifically preparing for the Women's British Open. She has set her sights on winning the Women's British Open. Right. And so has practiced cold golf and said, essentially attributed winning this to that practice because right. it was so unseasonably cold in Florida at the time of year, literally like, like players in jackets and, and mm. hoodies and stuff. Mm. And she reckons that her preparation for the Women's British Open is what won her the Tournament of Champions in Florida. So uh, Interesting. I finally <laughs> want to say on this, um, can they please for and by the good grace of God, get it sorted. Like mm. The fact that we start our year, the PGA Tour, at the beautiful plantation course in Kapalua, like iconic scenery, the best players in the world. Yes, obviously Cameron Smith broke the all-time scoring record to win it. There's some criticisms there, but why the fuck are there still celebrities playing a Stableford event alongside the women in their version of their tournament of champions. Yeah, like, I agree. Guys, it's a strong enough product to stand on. It's literally all the winners from last year are playing in a tournament. I don't need to see Marty Fish rolling fucking putts. I no agree. more. Like, what? why is it that I'm getting a flash of seeing the stroke play leaderboard of the women and then I've got, like, again... Larry Fitzgerald. Yeah, okay. Larry Fitzgerald, 26 points. Oh, What? <laughs> it's it's just it has like I accept that once a year and that's the AT&T I don't Pebble accept Beach. it then I still I don't, don't accept like it, it <laughs> but like to dilute the product of the women's tournament of champions yeah. the, the fact that still happened in 2022 is a disgrace Absolutely. the fact that Annika Sorensen enters that tournament as a celebrity <laughs> is also a disgrace <laughs> so <laughs> it's a couple so of things they need to get sorted out Absolutely. but congratulations to Daniel Kane no I completely agree that's us yeah, I think done. Um, obviously, we tried. We tried to keep it. keeping that yeah. under forty-five. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna get better at that. Anyway, yeah, it's just a lot to cover. Um, Louis Dobler later mm. uh, this week, as we flagged earlier, that'll come out Thursday. Drew. Yeah, Thursday. So just bear in mind that we recorded that. Um, we recorded that tonight, which is Monday. Also, bear in mind because I'm sure it will be news in the coming days. Um, that we weren't aware until after we stopped recording that himself and Jed Morgan are on their way to Saudi Arabia mm-hmm. to play in the highly lucrative Saudi International on the Asian Tour. 
So that's why that wasn't spoken about yeah. um, in that episode coming. And I'm sure that will make uh, news in the next couple of days. So Jed uh, won his way there by catapulting to the top 300 in the world. And then Louis jagged uh, an invite uh, as well. So uh, the two best mates are jumping on and playing together over to Riyadh. Uh, we, we did advise that they maybe keep the antics uh, PG. to a minimum well, in Riyadh. I don't uh, think there's any booze in Saudi Arabia, is there? Isn't it? Uh, um, geez, I'm right. getting way out of my depth here. So, yeah, it's, Anyway. It's, if there yeah. is, I don't think. Yeah, Jed's going to be. No, I don't yeah. think it's advisable. Be in trouble. Uh, but also, in addition to Louis Dobler, we have a number of guests. I think coming up. I think they call it a plethora of content. Yeah. I will I'll just spout out some names so people know Please. who's who's coming up. So we got Louis this week. We'll likely have Laurie Flynn, who we interviewed last week. He will be in the next couple of weeks. Michael Clayton has just got back to us. He's coming on the show. Kirsten Rudgley, Sarah Kemp, Daniel Beckman, uh, Hayden Barron will probably be checking in with again. Maddie Steiger, Daniel Gale, as we mentioned, Jake McLeod. Uh, who else have we got here? Uh, Bla- Blum. Blakey Windred's uh, video that went viral, uh, by the way, of him throwing the ball and that person yes. uh, jumping Excellent. over. That that may- needed to be mentioned. Uh, who else do we have here? Oh, there's bloody, there's that many of them. Matty Guy, uh, Aaron Wilkham, Cooper Geddes, uh, Blake Collier, Jordan Zunick, Timmy Hart. Uh, Derek Ackerman. I'm really trying hard not to read out the people <laughs> who have just slid into our DMs here and that aren't golfers. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I nearly read out Josh Robig, a good friend of the pod, but won't be coming on the pod. Well, I shan't uh, be a guest as much as you'd like to be. <laughs> Josh Armstrong, Jack Thompson, Lincoln Tyre, Cameron, uh, Cameron John will be on, uh, Cassie Porter, Johnny Loris, Chris Wood, Brady Watts, Steph Kiriakou, um, I mean, there's heaps. All those names have said that they are absolutely keen to come on. We've reached out to a whole bunch more as well that uh, hopefully will get back to us. So we have a lot of content coming your way. We'll probably still be doing the two a week because we don't want to overburden you, but those names are coming. Lots. Yeah. So Lots in long, long story short, you and I need to get our ass in here and record more than one night a week on a Monday. So yeah, to a- get through all that. There'll be a few... A few nights a week, this might actually turn into a genuine part-time job. <laughs> Without the pay, obviously. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right, Drew, so that's great news. Uh, just, just the great Michael Clayton. Unbelievable. Yes, I'm pumped. Yeah, that's very exciting. Looking forward to having Clayton on. Uh, so plenty to come, I think, is the long and the short of it, and plenty for you to enjoy in the coming weeks. Uh, fantastic to have your company as always, Drew. And we're back on Thursday night with Louis Dobler. <laughs>